Hello, everybody. Um, I thought I'd just go live today uh, to discuss some um, important backdoor options in the dribble drive or driving kick type offenses. I think that is kind of underlooked. Um, for you guys that don't know me, my name is Mark Hart. I'm the owner of System Basketball. I've been a high school coach for 26 years. Uh, coached boys for 25 years. Last year, coached girls for the first time, taught dribble drive to them for the first time. And just going to talk to you about some of my experience with uh, backdoor options. Uh, playing out of the drop zone is what I wanted to share with you today. Um, if you just drop me a comment on, on YouTube, in the chat, let me know where you're tuning in from or on the Facebook group. If you're watching it on replay or live, hashtag live, hashtag replay, that'd be awesome. So, I can, um, And if you have questions, go ahead and drop those in the chat and in the Facebook group or on the YouTube. And depending on how much time we have today, I'll, I'll answer them here live or I'll go back in and go through the comments. But let, let's dive in here and just wanted to talk about the the drop zone area of the floor so the drop zone area of the floor for me is a lot wider than when i first started out so so we're going to be talking about players picking up the ball in this area of the floor and what their options are for back doors and and some tips and tricks for you guys to take to your practices or to help your players understand this more. Um, when I first learned it, I saw this. I saw this little drop box, and you had to get to that elbow area to initiate the back door. I just think that's unrealistic nowadays, and I think sometimes even when you go higher on the back and stop higher out, like near the three-point line, you even get more space to throw this backdoor pass for the corner players. Um, a couple of, of ideas here about the corner player and when they should cut. It's better to be late than early. Um, had Brandon Henderson on for a clinic, and he, he teaches Princeton hybrid where he does a Princeton action in the dribble drive, much like I do on occasions. We do that. I do that as well. But – we as coaches sit here and tell players all the time, go back door, go back door, go back door. But if the player cuts too soon for the action, then you're not going to get that back door. I mean, in a roundabout way, it's counterproductive. It It's not as bad for just pure dribble drive teams because it does open up a gap or it gives, gives players mo more room to go drive or bounce it out and then just reverse the ball and get into another action, but something to write down. Better for them to be late than early. Um, the other thing is I want to talk about um, just the, the basic drop here. So if the player comes in this area and stops, this is a drop action, so that's a back door. So this is just a, a coaching tip here. I use the lane line as a guide because you're going to have your post player here. X five is going to probably be there. X two is going to be up the line. Typically when they make this read and they cut back door, they want to throw this pass prior to the player getting to that line. If they think that they're open past this line, it's probably stolen by X five. So teach your passer to not throw that pass once they've crossed that line. They need to throw it. I like to say if their back is turned to you, throw it off their throw it off their their foot closest to the baseline. Throw it near their foot's their back foot closest to the baseline here. So this foot right here, they want to kind of throw this pass, and we teach bounce passes. This is the one where we throw a bounce pass. So that's another tip. And then the third one is the catch the receiver they want to catch it with two hands land on two but when they're doing that and they're catching they want to turn and square their shoulders to the backboard so now they can bank it with their right hand 
or their left hand or up under crab dribble reverse something um i see a lot of teams or i see a lot of film my team included where they catch that basketball and now their shoulders are square to the rim and they're trying to shoot like a three foot floater right there and trying to get perfect net that's just a really difficult shot so i started teaching catch with two land on two but as you're landing on two teach them to get their shoulders square to the backboard not the rim okay And then the last thing with this right here with the tips is teach the back door be first before you teach the kick up. If you teach the kick up first, I'm here to tell you that you're probably making a mistake because your players are going to do that way before you even teach it. It's just natural for them to want to run up to the wing area and get the pass. So do yourself a favor and don't teach that immediately teach it late teach the back doors as much as possible early and that's that if you learn something today with this live take that with you um and i hope it helps you and let me know if that helped you um because i was in that realm where i taught stop in the drop zone and i taught that come out of the corner first and I'm like well we never back door we never back door i never emphasized it so if you don't emphasize it your players aren't going to do it Okay, so the options I have for you today, some of these are basic, some of them are a little bit more advanced, and I use terminology because you can call these as a coach, but as your, as your team gets better with the offense, a lot of these calls will just become organic in your offense. You won't have to call it, but you can say, hey, they're playing you tight. We need to look for drops out of the corners. We need to look for a drop two. We need to look for drop three. You had a drop there. If you have the terminology in, it's really easy. Like people will say, oh, that's 10, that's seven options. Well, it's it's not really. It's it's a concept. It's not plays, it's a concept and a term. So when we start adding the term and a number and, and things with it that I'm going to show you here today. It, it becomes pretty easy to understand it and you can do these in practice. So a drop two or what we've kind of, I've kind of gone to for a hand signal is thumbs down two. thumbs down two means a back door for a thumbs down means a back door for us. So if they, if they dribble up to the, to the drop zone area. Now one needs to pick up the ball and then, and then this is just, preference for you guys you can jump stop this or stride stop this i've gone to the proponent of stride stopping so that would be a right so we would be stopping on our right foot and then our left foot is down so we know we are right foot pivot here so we're turning we're protecting the basketball our shoulders to the sideline the defenders on there and now we're looking to hit the player for a back door that would be our first option on a drop two okay so if they got this, that would be a layup for us, hopefully. That would be a potential layup. That's our number one option. If that player wasn't open, they would continue to the corner. If you notice here, I don't have five coming over. That's a mistake if you have five coming over. They're going to potentially get double teamed. So five needs to stay high and wide. Three would start coming up and two is cutting to the corner, okay? If that's not open, now four would, how I teach it, with a stride stop, now we would reverse, we would swing our left foot back and throw a left hand pass to four. And now the option out of that is, shot is one cuts through. So four has jump shot, four has give and go to the one, jump shot, or a rack opportunity. Now, there's other things you can do with it. They can get into DHOs, can get into whatever else you want. Um, I believe that you want to do the give and go. Some coaches will teach, pass, go here. And then if they don't like it, you can get into dribble handoffs with your one or go side ball screen there. 
it's a decent option, but I would probably teach that more as a play than the basic concepts because the core concepts of dribble drive is usually you pass and you cut to create a gap. Okay, so a drop three, a drop three um, can be done a few ways. I like to do, if we're going to do a drop three, and this is my favorite type of drops, is from angles. So opposite slot to opposite corner. I don't like going same side because the angle is kind of bad for the pass. I like to create the triple gap first. So we like to uh, – there we go. Four is going to shallow cut loop cut, nail cut, whatever terminology you want to use there, and they get to that, that box. Okay, so now this is the hardest thing to teach. So I would work on this one a lot, is the five and the four are on a string here, so they're moving at the same time. And then on the pickup, five needs to flash. I see too many teams where this player cuts back door and five does not come up. Five needs to flash and call for the ball to make X5 make a decision. Do they help on that? Because X3 probably isn't going to be the player that steals the ball. It's going to be this player. So if they go for this pass and they're standing right here, X5 can now recover if one tries to throw it there or three tries to throw it block to block. One player is guarding two, and we don't want that spacing. You don't want three players in a line. Okay. So that flash and calling for the ball is going to make X5 make the decision. So if X5 kind of comes up, it's easy. Or on that, if X5 comes over, the options would be drift, tee up, fill behind kind of come in that area they would have outs if they're if they were stopped by x5 but if five is standing on that block it 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 really really bogs down your your drops okay um now this is what you're probably gonna more see in the offense here coming up is is organically so you're probably going to get some sort of action before a drop by all means coming out of a timeout or you're seeing stuff and you can go thumbs down three uh thumbs down two uh you could have that options there so we're going to go to the drop zone here and we're going to do a loop loop out of the corner or a kick up and then here is again this is going to be a this is where the five needs to relocate and the, so the four goes behind five goes and now we set up a kick up to drop so for me the terminology is thumbs down 23 so the first number is the player lifting and the second number is the player cutting back door and two is the right side and three is the left side so I didn't draw it to the other side. But if I flip my thing here, this would be a drop. This would be a drop 32. Three and two would be switched on the screen in, in your offense. So it would be this one. So the two would actually be the three. So that's the three side of the floor. So this would be a drop 32. So that's what it would look like going the opposite way. Okay. Now a drop four is just this. It could be a straight call or it could be you just get to the drop zone. The three is not open back door. So you hit your four. That's a drop four call for us. That's it's not even really a call. We'll probably call drop three or drop two, unless specifically I know we have a mismatch there and I want to get the ball of the elbow to a player 
that can't be guarded in that situation. And then that's what it would look like. Everybody rotates around to get into their dribble drive spots. Get the blue off. Okay. Now this is a late game for me. You're really being the not your your point guards really being pressured. Um, so we do a push cut. So we're gonna dribble at two. Force force coming a little too early on this animation for me. First option when you dribble at somebody, it's a back door. So that's just basic concepts of the offense. That's a dribble at. So they're dribbling at the player, not the defensive player. So that's a back door for us. Okay. So if that player is not open on the back door, we're going to hit four. Now I'm going to tell you X1 is going to turn and stare at that basketball when that pass is made in the air. They're not. So one needs to, as soon as they throw that ball, sprint right to the basket for a given go. Now you run it late and they sag it. They know it's coming. Well, now you can play fake it, dribble hand it, hand off it, or fake this hand off and go. So there's a little bit of things there that you can do if you have that skilled big or you have an undersized post there or you want to put someone there in that situation. Um, this next one that I want to really discuss that today is it's not really well known to do this and I'm bad at teaching this and I need to get better at it, but I think we get ourselves in trouble. Um, when we have a good five player here, a good off guard and they're just being denied the basketball and how do you get them the ball? Um, I think this one can really set you up. So you're going to go kick up and you're going to go dribble at. Because what I see a lot of times here is this player will turn here and this player will, instead of them going, they'll drive, but they'll come, but their back's turned when that should have just been a backdoor cut. And you're going to get some stuff here. If they're not open there, and my rule here is much like before. If a player cuts back door from the top, you need to throw it to them before they pass the free throw line. So if they have time to catch it, react, see help defense, and not get called for a charge. There's a couple of reasons there. So we set it up with like a Princeton type action. We go kick up and we're going to go dribble at. Boom. So like I said before, X3 has to make a decision. So if we hit five here, because X3 decided not to help, and now X4 comes and helps, you still got that. X1 helps the helper. You got that. So back doors from the top, dribbling at and cutting back door, and that was set up with a two two number combination i called it a drop 25 and that can just become organic in the offense um i don't i think players turn and and look at that basketball get their shoulders turned a lot they don't get flat backed and they look get caught watching and our players are always constantly just going behind going behind going behind for a kickback when they should be cutting back door in the back so um, I do have a couple of nice drop three options here for you on video so you can kind of see this today um, and see here's here's Houston so they did the they did the rub there and now she's got turned she's still dribbling and then you go see the only thing here as soon as this player's cutting back door, this player should be flashing. This player should be high and wide up here because by her spacing, this player can stay 
And if this person flashes, this person can take away that next option. They do get a backdoor layup here, but their spacing was bad. Okay. Now here is, they're not going to get the back door. Okay, they started with the pass and cut. You can do that as well. Okay, here we go. Again, I would like to see this player here. Up wide. See, this player's sitting on the elbow when this player should be teeing up. It works out for them. She didn't fully tee up. But there's the help. And then there's the dish. This player didn't help. So they got the they got the drop three to a tee up is what we would call that. Again for you. All right. And then and this one's just gonna be a straight drop three. Okay. She's just going to dribble. She kind of came wide. See, she's not in perfect drop zone area. She's in this gray area, kind of off the drop zone, but she's deep. Okay. Back turn. She just threw a regular pass. Sometimes you have to. She threw a regular chest pass, and she got it. Let's look at that one more time for you. They're playing hugger defense in the corner. And, I mean, I'd love to hear it in the comments. How many of your players, she's hugging there, would fight that and just try to come up and get a handoff? My, my players do it all the time. And it, it drives you nuts. So you got to teach the drops. And, again, I'm going to leave you with today, teach these first. Teach lifting out of the corner last. Um. If you want to learn some more dribble drive, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, me and if you're not already a DDM A to Z course member, uh, Kurt and I have done a course on the dribble drive motion offense A to Z, 13 chapters. There's a link inside the um, YouTube video of this to go check that out. Um, pretty, co it's a pro comprehensive online course where we cover from installation to how they do how you would run it versus various defense, how to skill develop, how to practice plan and drills and so forth and so on. So if you have any questions for me, uh, drop them in the comments. Let me know in the Facebook group or on YouTube uh, what, what you want to learn next about the dribble drive. And me and Kurt will possibly be able to do that for you guys. But just wanted to quickly go over drop zone reads for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.